Hello everyone, this video is part 3 of building a responsive website from scratch. In this video we're going to be finishing up the mobile menu section by building the animated off canvas menu. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, check it out. Otherwise, let's get into it. Now to start off building this off canvas menu, looking at the design, we can see that it's fairly simple, it's just a white block and each link is in its own row. So what we're going to do is first write the HTML markup and then I'm going to style it in our SCSS and then the last step will be to handle the animation and make it slide on screen or fade in or something when you open the hamburger menu. So let's go into our code editor and let's figure out where we want to put the markup for the menu. So obviously we want it to be in the header tag since it is part of the header the menu is. So I'm going to, I think, put the menu in a div after the nav. So let's call this header underscore underscore menu maybe? Wait, am I using this already? Oh yeah, I'm using the menu for the hamburger. I think this is more of the menu, so I'm going to rename what the hamburger is. So instead of underscore underscore menu, let's make it underscore underscore toggle. And then I'll just rename this in the styles. So here we go. Header menu is now header toggle. Let's just do a quick find and replace here. I'll just add a little toggle here to clarify what that's doing. And let's double check the JavaScript as well. It doesn't look like there's a menu, so we're good on that side. Let's just go back to our site real quick, make sure everything's still working. Okay, overlay and the hamburger icon are still working, which is good. So now let's move forward and create our header menu. The header menu is going to be, you know, that white block. And then in that, we're going to make some links. So let's look back at the design. One, two, three, four, five links. So we'll say a link times five. Again, using that Emmet shortcut. Press enter and we got five links. This is just a landing page, so I don't need to have these actually be links. So it's going to be home about contact blog careers. Boom. About. About. Contact. Blog. It's like a test of my short term memory. And careers. Let's just double check that. Home about contact blog careers. Yay. I think this should be all the markup that we need. Let's go back into the header and then add the styles for the menu. So the menu. So the background is going to be... Background will be white. Did I create a variable for the white color? No variables. White, I did. It'll be background white. And then in that will be links. And I don't think I need an additional class for the anchor links themselves. I think it's just enough that they're anchor links. So that's going to be color and it looks like it's probably the same gray as the header here. So let's go back into our variables and I'm guessing it's the dark blue thing. Now we also need to add a bit of spacing. Get my handy dandy little rectangle here and then we will see first how much spacing there is on the top and bottom of the whole thing. This looks like about 36. It's the same on the bottom. And then each link probably needs some space too. What I might do is do something like this where each link is going to be a certain height, maybe 36. And then let me duplicate this square here. Then I'll add another padding on top and bottom of 26. So then each link is going to be, you know, 36, something like this. We can always tweak it later on. So it's going to be padding of top and bottom is 26 and then 36 height for each link. So padding, I guess I need to use a calculator again. 36, no, no, 26 for the padding divided by 16 is 1.625 rems. 1.625 rems on top and bottom and then zero on left and right. I guess we could just do it all around. So we got the padding and then I think I also want to... Now there's a couple ways we could do this. I could, I could add top and bottom padding to the link itself. I could also add the height of 36 and then make it a flexbox parent and align items center. I think I'm just going to add the top and bottom padding. Let's say 10 pixels on top and bottom. That way I don't have to write as many styles as I would if I had to turn this into a flexbox thing. So padding, oops, padding and 10, going back to calculator, 0.625. And what the heck, we'll just make it all the way around. Now let's see what we got on our site. Now we got our links. It has a white space, but I think that's okay. So I want them to not be side by side and it's happening because anchor links by default are display, I think inline or inline block, one of those. 
if we change them to display block, then they will take up the whole width that they want, that they can. There we go. So display block, maybe text align center. Oops, turn the caps lock again. Text align center. Looks like that works. So let's add those styles into our code. Display block. And for whatever reason, I like to order my styles in this way where text align center, where I start with kind of the bigger properties like display and position, flex box things. And then I move on to margin and padding, and then I do text colors. And then at the end, I'll do like transitions or whatever. It's just a way that I like to keep things a little bit organized because when you start getting more rules, you don't want to be searching. So I just try to group these similar styles together. Let's load the site. That looks pretty good. Now, the other thing we need to look at is this white block for the menu doesn't take up the entire width, but it looks like, so you can see on the mobile site, there's like a container width. So you have some space on left and right, and it looks like it's kind of sort of the same um, all the way down. Let me refresh my memory and see if I actually added some padding to stuff. Okay, I did add some padding, and that's from header nav. So that's just kind of a global padding thing. Okay, so before I do more stuff with the menu itself, I think I need to add some, add this padding that I have here on the header and put it sort of for anything on the mobile page because we want we don't want things to go all the way to the edge and it looks like things are right now because yeah like later on we're gonna need that padding the padding that i was looking at was on the nav okay i think the best way to do this is to take this padding not have it nav specific but make it a helper class of course so let's add some spacing so we'll say the generic container class and then this will have the padding so that means we want to go into the nav element and then add the container padding there. Okay, it looks like it's working. So it doesn't have the padding in the nav, but it's in the container class. So now that means we can add this container class to other, other elements. But actually for the container class, I only want the left and right padding. I don't want the top and bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is take this top and bottom, make it zero for the container helper class but go back to the header and put the nav selector back and say padding 1.0625 rems, zero. Because, oh boy, what did I do? Oh, I know why. It's because this reset the padding. So the nav has the padding just on top and bottom and it's canceling out the left and right padding here. And that's because I'm using this padding shorthand. So the best way to do this is to specify padding top and padding bottom. I use a little control D to duplicate the line. So it's a really helpful shortcut here. And then here it's gonna be padding left and right of 1.5 rems. There we go. Shorthand properties are great, but sometimes you do want to split them out just because you might want different values for different elements. So now the nav has padding all the way across, which is good. And we can start adding the container class padding to other elements. When we have the menu open, we want it to be on top of the overlay and then have that spacing. So I think if I just add the container class to the header menu itself, it should automatically do that. We can't see it right now, but there we go. So we can see there is padding there. Although, wait a minute, I don't want padding. I want margin for that. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the padding because I do need it for like the other content down on the page, but we need to change this padding to margin for just the header menu. So let's get rid of this and let's take that padding left and right. It's 1.5 rems. We do want it to match the padding that the rest of the container elements are going to have, but we're going to make it a margin instead. So margin, and I think we can use the shorthand, so zero and then 1.5 rems. So now you can see that it does have that margin. You just can't see it on the page itself because everything's white. So I think we should be good to go now. Let's just take one more look at the design. Okay, so there are some rounded corners. So let's add a border radius to the menu as well. Border radius. Let's try three pixels. I think we have enough now that we can start doing the overlay thing. Right now, the header menu is under the overlay because the overlay has, I'm assuming it has a Z index. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't have a Z index because I didn't do it yet. Let's see what we got here. Overlay and then nav is there. Menus under that. I guess because this doesn't have a Z index set, 
and that is probably because there's no position property. So if you don't have a position property, it's going to default to position static, which means that anything that has its position set or has a Z index value is going to be on top of it. So let's see what happens if we add position absolute. Okay, so now it's on top of stuff. And let's try with 100%. So you can see it's like going off the screen. So what we want to do is this margin thing isn't actually doing anything because so it's position absolute. What you could do is instead of with 100%, you could say with like 90 and then margin. Actually, I don't know if this is going to work because it's position absolute. Yeah, it's not. So since it's position absolute, unfortunately, you can't use the margin auto on left and right to center it because it's like not in relation to anything else. It's absolute. Now I do want to make that spacing right. So since we had that margin before of 1.5 rems, which is not being used, obviously, I don't know if it's the best way, but I can do a calc and say, I want this to be all the way across hundred percent minus 1.5 rems on either side. So 1.5 times two is three. So three rems. Then when we center it, it'll be, it'll sort of be flush to either side for the container. For a position absolute element, you can center it by using left 50% and then transform translate x negative 50%. And what this is doing is left 50% is making it go 50% or halfway across, you know, its container. So that's why it's right in the middle. What transform does is it's going to, let me turn off that left. If you don't have it by default, it's going to be left aligned, right? So if you turn on transform translate x, you're moving it 50% of the object itself. So not the container, but the object itself. So that's why combining the left, so this is the middle line right here, and we want to move it back to be centered, but we only want to move it back this much, half of the width of the element itself. So that's why these combined will give you a centered position absolute item. So let's do this. We're going to copy these things over to our code. There we go. So position absolute, Width is the calc, 100% minus three rems to have the padding. Then we're doing the left 50% transform translate x, negative 50. I think I need to get rid of this margin. Yeah, there we go. Don't need that anymore. Opening the overlay. Now we can see it's nicely centered. And we probably need to add a little bit of space on the top there. Using our little handy dandy rectangle here. Let's see how much space that is. About 24. So we are going to do margin top. Where's the calculator? 24 divided by 16, 1.5. There we go. Okay, so now it looks pretty good. I think we might need a little bit more rounded corners. Let's try increasing that border radius a little bit. Maybe five? How about compared to the design? It's actually not super round. I think five is good. Okay, so there we have our mobile menu. The next thing we need to do is we want to animate the menu on screen. When the menu is closed, it's going to be off canvas, meaning off, you know, your viewport. You're not going to be able to see it. And then it'll somehow animate in. We could either fade it in, we could slide it down from the top or slide it in from the right. Let's do some research. So go back to code pen, search for off canvas menu, maybe, maybe mobile menu, maybe animated mobile menu, get a little more specific. Okay, responsive menu with icon. This seems pretty popular. So I'm just kind of getting ideas for, you know, how they're handling this thing. Um, where's the menu? What? Hello? Well, not sure what happened to that. Bootstrap 4 animated menu. You click this thing. So this is interesting. It sort of fades in, covers everything. So that's that's one way we could do it. Sort of similar to the how the overlay sort of fades in and fades out. You could fade in the menu along with the overlay. So that would be actually be sort of cool. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I was thinking I was going to slide in from the left or right, but fading it in actually seems quite nice. And we can hopefully utilize some of the same styles and animations that we did for the overlay into the menu. So looking again, the overlay was set at opacity zero position fixed. Is that right? Wait a minute. It's opacity zero. It's still, you can't click through it. So it is here. Oh yeah, it's not clickable. What did I do? I think I forgot to maybe add visibility hidden. Then we can still select stuff underneath it. Yeah, I, think I just needed to add that visibility hidden. And actually, I since I'm reusing this for the overlay and also the menu, let's make it a helper class like everything else. So let's see here, visibility. Maybe I should put it in animations. 
So we're using visibility. So what I'm going to do is before the keyframes, I'm going to add another helper class. I'll say has fade <laughs> and I'll say visibility hidden. And that's going to be the default state of any of these elements that we're fading in and fading, fading out. Let's see, go to header. Okay. It doesn't have visibility here because I had forgotten it last time, but now I can add the has fade class to the overlay. And if this works, We'll also add it to our menu itself. Let's reload for good measure. Okay, so overlay has fade, visibility is hidden. I can see that I can select through, like the overlay is not preventing me from clicking here because it's the text cursor. Okay, so this is working. So I'm going to add that has fade class also to the menu itself. Go ahead, our menu has fade. So now it's not visible because it is visibility hidden. Let's find the element. There it is. So has fade. So now I can just kind of do the same thing that I did for the overlay in our JavaScript. Scoot this over a little bit so we can see In our JavaScript. We are when we open the hamburger menu, we are adding the fade in fade out to the overlay. We also want to do that to the menu. But since they both have that has fade class, what I could do is instead of having to duplicate both these lines of code for both elements, I could say const. I'll just say fade elements, elements. <laughs> so document query selector. And then if it has that class of has fade, I can hopefully target it with this. Actually, I might need query selector all. Yeah, because query selector, I think will just, yeah, it just gets the first one. So I need to do query selector all. And that's why I'm naming the constant name with a plural instead of a singular. Just little, little hints like that will sort of help you not make mistakes. So let's handle the open stuff first. Fade elms. And I think I can do for each. For each. All right. Can't remember the syntax. Uh, JavaScript for each. I know this is very basic. I admit I'm not super well versed in JavaScript. Oh yeah, for each function, yada yada. So for each function, we want to do this. So then in the function, it's going to be element. Hopefully this will work. Okay, so what we want to happen is on both the overlay and the header menu, when we click this, we want it to add the fade in class. Ooh, it worked. Um, what happened here? Weird. It's disappearing for some strange reason. What happened? Maybe let me try removing the has fade class from the menu just to see what happens when it's only on the overlay. Weird. Why is it disappearing like that? That's very strange. Let me try to do it manually. Fade in. Oh, even if I do it manually, weird. Something about the has fade is like canceling this for some reason. Cause I had the visibility hidden. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. Adding the class via JavaScript does seem to be working. So that's not the problem. The problem seems to be because of this has fade class where I set the visibility to hidden. Oh, it's cause I think I didn't add the end state for this visibility visible. There we go. I think that should work now. Yeah. Because the way I'm running the animation, it's going forward. So it's keeping the end state here. So because this was not here, it kind of defaulted back to the visibility hidden from that has fade class. So now things should work. Let's see. Okay. Stays like that. Okay. So let's add the has fade class back to the header menu. All right. Oh, I didn't add the other stuff. We just added code for the fade in, which seems to be working. Looks pretty nice. Might speed that animation up a little bit. So let's do the reverse. So we'll do the same thing. Fade elms for each function element. So the element parameter, because it's looping through every element that has the has fade class, you can use the element parameter to target and run functions and stuff like that. So element element. Okay. So now both the open and close functionality should work. So let's give it a run. Hey, look at that. 
Nice. Okay, I'm gonna speed that up a bit. It's just a little bit, a little bit slow. So let's do 200 for both fade in and fade out. But I'm pretty pleased how this looks. I think that's pretty good. Now I did want to fix that overlay because when you scroll like this, like the overlay is not going all the way to the top. Overlay, I said top 3.75, how about zero? Oh, it's because I don't want it to be on top of the header or I don't want it to be on top of the nav. I want the header to be on top of it, but I think that adding the, it should still go all the way to the top. So I think it's because this doesn't have a position set. I think this is position relative. I'm trying to put the nav on top of the overlay. Oh, it doesn't have a background color. It was just using it from the um, the body, but it needs its own background color. There we go. So now it still scrolls and stuff. Let's do that. So to the nav, we'll add position relative and the background color. Relative, background color, white. All right. There we go. So now, oh, I forgot to... <laughs> We have to remove the overlay thing. Top of zero. Let's reload. Here we go. So now, you know, this looks pretty good. Another thing people do sometimes is when you open the menu, you sort of lock scrolling on the body. So you basically say overflow hidden. So then you can't scroll. So I think I might do that with yet another helper class. So body, what we'll another class of this? We'll just say no scroll. <laughs> so overflow hidden. We are going to have to add this class to the body when you open the menu. So when you open the menu, we're going to... Oh, I need to add it as, as a constant. Let's add it to the top here. Constant body equals document query selector body. There we go. When you open it, you're going to lock the scroll by adding this class list add no scroll and then we'll do the reverse remove and we'll just put this one first since that's the way we had it in the other one Let's see if this works so opening the menu all right so we can't scroll i'm trying to scroll and it's not happening because it wants to keep you on the menu when i close the menu it removes a no scroll class and we can again scroll down okay hey this is turning out to be pretty good so we're done with the mobile menu and the next step is going to be going back and adding the rest of the content of the site.